Okay, guys, so I'm here to preview the Hangar Kippers season. Now, last year, the Kippers won 40 and 26. They were fourth in the Western Conference. They got bounced out by the Spurs in the second round of the playoffs in the sweep. But this was the first time since 07, I believe, that the Clippers had made the playoffs. That 07 team was built around Sam Cassell and Elkin Brown, who led them to a... They were fifth in the Western Conference that year, but they got back with out in the first round also. So, the league, the Los Angeles Clippers have been filled with futility for the most part. The year before Chris Paul got there, they were going, I, I believe they were going to win 48 with a combination of Baron Davis and Mo Williams as the same point guard. And last year they were 40 and 26 and 8 games different, different than they both came into the playoffs just because of Chris Paul. Now, if you look at the stack last year, um, The, the LA Clippers were were can can been scoring in the Western Conference with ninety seven point five points per game and around the fourth most points in the Western Conference in 95. So they were a high scoring team and barely pay any defense. I expect the same from them this year, but the difference is going to be they're getting some people back, and they finally have, like, a solid second option in Jamal Crawford who can relieve the pressure off Chris Paul. Because last year in the fourth quarter, it was all Chris Paul for the most part. Now, the more Crawford, let's look at his last two seasons. Obviously, with Portland last year, he averaged 13.9 points and 3.2 rebounds. The year before that, with the Hawks, he averaged 14.2 points and 3.2 rebounds. And in 2009-2010, he averaged 18 and 3. And for his career, he, he got averaging 15. 15 point three points per game, and he's cut in the fourth quarter when you need a basket. So he'll relieve some pressure off.
Chris Paul to the point where people are going to have to start paying attention to Jamal Crawford and leaving Chris Paul one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I'm not saying that Jamal Crawford is great or anything, but he can relieve some of the pressure that Chris Paul was feeling. And the reason that I think that he finally had a second option is because I believe Blake Griffin is only an entertainer. You can't rely on him if you want him to carry a basketball team. Although he averaged 20.7 points per game, and 10.9 rebounds, most of those were on gunk. He doesn't have like a face-up game or back to the basket game. He only gunk and rebound, and when you get to the playoffs, where the defense is in tank, you need to develop that face-up game in order to be a real good. So, I'm not that high on Blake Griffin at all. Now, they did pick up some good piece, some other good pieces in Lamar Odom. I know he had a bad year last year. where he got dismissed from the Dallas Mavericks. And in 15 games, Lamar Owen averaged 6.6 points and 4.2 rebounds. That's not the Lamar Odom people are used to seeing, where he would average where he would average in his Laker days about 14 points a game and 8.6 rebounds and for his career he averaging 14.2 points per game and 8.6 rebounds. So he's gonna be a solid player off the bank who you can rely on to come off the bank and score. The main reason why I don't think he was successful in Dallas, his family in L.A., he likes the L.A. spotlight. He likes all about L.A. He's L.A. to the core. So if he goes anywhere else, he won't be successful. That's why I'm expecting more of his career numbers than what he averaged in Dallas. Therefore, he can help the LA Clippers make a payoff again. And last but not least, the game can keep Bill back from that corner key. In his 20 games, before the corner keys, he was averaging 15 points and 4 assists. He can also help Chris Paul 
we need to move the picture off of Chris Paul. Him and the more traffic are going to be key this year. For the LA Kippers to be successful. Of course, they got some other good people like Karan Butler, who last year in 63 games averaged 12 points, Kyle Payer, a good guy who can produce. Last but not least, I believe that the Kippers are going to win around 55 games, but they're going to be stuck in the position where the Spurs were last year, where they're going to be good in the Western Conference, but you're not going to get out of the Western Conference. That's my opinion on the Clippers, guys. Peace.